The retreat of international retailers in China is nearly complete. As one of the first international retail corporations to enter mainland China, Carrefour from France has had several of its old stores put up closure announcements approaching the end of 2021. At the beginning of 2021, it closed 14 stores in just two months. American retail giant Walmart has closed 107 stores in China in recent years. The first store it opened in China was closed on December 7, 2021, which has saddened some local consumers. Both Chinese consumers and those in the retail industry can feel that this is an end of an era, and the future is full of uncertainty. Before Carrefour and Walmart, a large number of foreign-owned retail outlets have chosen to take their losses. These include companies from around the world. They have been retreating from the Chinese market almost exclusively from 2018 to mid-2021. These retail giants in their respective countries are still doing relatively well. Why do they almost inevitably fail when they come to China? Let's examine Carrefour and Walmart as examples. In 1995, Carrefour opened its first shopping outlet in mainland China. At that time, the concept of self-service supermarket was still new in China. People's perception of the store was a store with a counter and a salesperson behind the counter. At that time, it was difficult for the Chinese to imagine that they could buy clothes and food in one place. Carrefour's one-stop shopping convenience and abundant products became so popular in China that consumers were lined up at the entrance before the store opened. The success of Carrefour attracted many large international retail groups to follow suit. In the same year, Metro entered China, followed by Walmart from the US in 1996, Auchan from France in 1997. In 2000, Marks & Spencer, Takashimaya, Macy's, Amazon, among others, all poured into the Chinese market. By 2010, Carrefour had 249 stores, which should have been its heyday in China. In 2012, the company also established a Communist Party branch in its Beijing location, making it the first foreign retailer in China to have a party branch. According to the analysis by the Chinese media, in 2010, supermarkets of 400 to 2,500 square meters had already reached saturation in mainland China. The size of supermarkets that can accommodate 10,000 people has already surpassed that of Hong Kong and Taiwan. With international hypermarkets frantically expanding their territories in China and opening more stores, an unfortunate thing has emerged. There aren't enough consumers. It should be noted that the situation of domestic supermarkets in China is not any better. For example, Shenzhen's oldest supermarket also saw a wave of store closures in 2021. More stores have been closed in the first half of 2021 than in the past three years. Many stores have been in business for more than a decade. <laughs> First of all, around 2010, the rapid rise of e-commerce in China dealt a huge blow to all physical stores. According to data released by China's National Bureau of Statistics, online shopping in China accounted for less than 2% of total retail sales in 2009. But from January to October 2021, online retail sales in China grew by 17.4% year-on-year, with online retail sales of physical goods accounting for 23.7% of total retail sales. Both Walmart and Carrefour eventually chose to operate their e-commerce business with Chinese partners. Walmart's e-commerce business was handed over to Chinese e-commerce giant Jingdong in a share swap, while Taiwan-based Sun Art Retail chose to work with Alibaba in 2017. 
From 2017, Kara for China gradually used online and offline integration to revamp some of its stores, but it was too late as it reported a loss of 157 million US dollars a year. In 2019, Kara for China was acquired by the Chinese company Suning with a price of 4.8 billion dollars for 80% of its equity. That is to say, the present Kara for China is actually a Chinese-owned company. After Suning took over, the business situation of Carrefour hasn't had obvious improvement. It looks like Walmart will follow in the footsteps of Carrefour. It entered China in 1996, opened its first store in Shenzhen, and has since opened more than 400 stores in more than 100 cities in China. Since 2016, Walmart has been closing stores in various cities in China. Walmart revealed that its gross margin in China declined for 10 consecutive quarters since the first quarter of the fiscal year 2020. In 2021, there have been several rumors of Walmart selling its business in China. On October 9, 2021, an internal memo from Walmart Global Sourcing, a division of Walmart's head office, was circulated online in China announcing the transfer of the global supplier business unit from China to India effective immediately. Walmart is currently conducting relocation operations and has committed to sourcing 10 billion US dollars in products from India. Later, Walmart China said in an interview with Chinese media that the global sourcing relocation shouldn't be interpreted as a global sourcing headquarters relocation. Why is China's e-commerce so powerful? It's because high-tech companies in China are backed by state capital. The internet, backed by state capital and the Chinese Communist Party, is advancing at such a pace that it can eat up the space of brick-and-mortar stores in a short period. In China, consumers can turn on their cell phones and click on the major e-commerce home delivery platforms which usually deliver goods to consumers' homes within an hour. The Chinese internet is characterized by its scale rather than services. Do anything to expand its size. When one notices big retailers being cornered by online commerce, one can only imagine that countless small brick-and-mortar businesses have already disappeared in China. This is another city in southwest China where an image design studio suddenly emptied overnight without warning leaving its employees standing in the doorway in confusion. Secondly, in addition to China's fast-growing e-commerce market, China's land economy has also affected the business of these hypermarkets. The Chinese government has relied on the sale and lease of land for high profits over the past three decades. Property prices in cities have skyrocketed. Year after year, increasing rents for stores in the heart of major cities have slashed the profit margins of businesses. According to the China Franchise Association, from 2009 to 2018, the main costs of rent, labor, and utilities in China's retail industry continued to rise. As a percentage of sales, they rose from 4.5% in 2009 to 8.9% in 2018. Of these, rent rose by 85% and labor costs rose by 147%. In North America and Europe, people enjoy more living spaces compared to the Chinese, hence more room for stuff. They are used to driving to big box stores on weekends to stock up for the week. In the first-tier cities in China, where these foreign-owned hypermarkets have taken root, the Chinese family unit is getting smaller and time is tighter and more precious. Buying in small quantities, in a hamster style and on demand, is more in line with the needs of today's small Chinese families. Thirdly, the domestic retail industry has grown rapidly to become a force to reckon with. The hallmark of Chinese business people is that they make decisions quickly. A former manager at Carrefour told Chinese media that compared to foreign companies, bosses of domestic companies in China have a short decision-making chain, and the company's execution is quick and powerful as a result. He said, The motivation for owners of domestic retailers is, I need to survive when they roll out a new promotion. Whereas, the boss of a foreign retailer is more of a professional manager who has been assigned to a branch organization like China. 
As a professional manager, he is concerned about making his performance look good during his tenure, and he is afraid that his major capital investment will affect his performance. For example, when competitors launch low-priced goods for promotional purposes, foreign supermarkets such as Walmart can adjust prices promptly and offer discounts in response. The headquarters of foreign supermarkets won't allow the stores to set the prices. Secondly, the purchase and distribution are standardized throughout the country, so when Walmart stores in a certain city get the goods and adjust prices, the campaign of its competitors has already finished. In addition, in recent years, foreign companies in China face a challenging business environment, not only in terms of political factors, but also in terms of frequent visits from various government departments, such as the Industry and Commerce Unit, Taxation Unit, and Fire Safety Unit. It's common knowledge among owners of brick-and-mortar stores in China that when the government conducts fire inspections, they will easily find fault with fire extinguishers, fire hydrants, fire escapes, etc., and suspend the business for rectification. The larger the supermarket, the greater the loss will be if the business is closed for a day. The merchant either pays a fine or offers a bribe to the person in charge of the inspection. The fourth reason is the cultural differences in consumption. For many Chinese consumers, the items they buy are not only for practical use, but also bear the function of showcasing their lifestyle. A well-known brand can be used by Chinese people to parade or show off in their WeChat circle of friends, so why buy an item that none of their friends know? Therefore, it takes time to nurture and educate Chinese consumers to trust products that they aren't familiar with. Marks & Spencer, which entered the Chinese market in 2008, is known for its British style, high quality, and inexpensive brand, Mark & Spencer. However, after entering China, its proprietary brand design hasn't been well received by Chinese consumers. Mark & Spencer has placed too much emphasis on word-of-mouth marketing and too little on advertising and marketing, making it insufficiently recognizable to Chinese consumers. The style, fabric, color, and design of its products in the Chinese market are also directly copied from the British style. What do Chinese consumers think? They describe Marks & Spencer's clothing as too old-fashioned and worn by old ladies. In 2018, the UK's largest multinational commercial retail group pulled out of China. The fifth and most important reason is that the era of high economic growth is gone, and economic growth will slow down in the future due to the impact of China's high debt, real estate bubble, and the US-China trade war. We have resumed work for three days. In these three days, we have collected equipment from 20 restaurants. At the beginning of this month, we rented a warehouse of 1,000 square meters, and it's already full of these equipment. In truth, the more we collect, the sadder our hearts are. See these restaurants? Closed down, one by one. One can imagine, these restaurant operators aren't easy. Of these 20 stores, 9 are kebab stores, 2 large hot pot stores, and more than 1,000 square meters, 3 Chinese restaurants, 3 noodle shops, 2 selling milk tea, as well as a bar that was opened for just over a month. I didn't release these videos because they are very sad. Several international analysts have downgraded their forecasts for China's future growth. For example, economists at UBS have lowered their forecasts for China's full-year growth from 8.2% to 7.6%, and this will mean a further slowdown in GDP growth to 2.7% year-on-year in the fourth quarter. According to official data from China, the two-year average growth of total retail sales of consumer goods was only 3.9% in the third quarter of 2021, significantly lower than the same period in a normal year. Sluggish consumption is the biggest drag on China's economic recovery. Against this backdrop, the odds that foreign-owned hypermarkets will be able to turn it around become smaller and smaller. The Chinese market is like a paradise for venture capitalists. Many have left, but new ones who think they have found opportunities keep coming. On June 7th and August 29th, 2021, Germany's Aldi supermarket and Costco from the US opened up new stores in China, respectively. Their first stop is Shanghai. Both stores have been open for a short time. In the unique environment of China, are they capable of not repeating the failures of their international counterparts? Perhaps it's too early to predict, or perhaps their fate has already been sealed.